Welcome to another class. We're going to do something completely different today. We're not going to paint. We're going to use our oil pastels. And on the post, Miss Christine posted it for us, all the colors we're going to use. And I have mine lined up to make it easy for me to get them because there's so many colors to choose from. I didn't want to get mixed up. So let's go over. Well, first let me show you the project. I think you're going to be surprised that you will be able to do this and it's going to be easy and fun. It is messy. So if you think you might get it on your clothes, it might be good to have a shirt on or something, an apron that you know, you're not going to wreck. So I have, first of all, I have my paper and I have another piece of paper folded in half because sometimes when I'm doing things, I want to lay my hand on, a, on the white paper so I don't smear, the, smear my good picture because it does smear easily. Okay, I have paper towels and then I have this little little rag and it's, it's soft. It's part of a t-shirt. What I'm going to do later is I'll wrap it around my finger and I'll rub my, my pastels to blend it. And then I do have some baby wipes to clean up with. So let's go over the colors. I have this kind of turquoisey aqua. It's called cerulean blue and this is a light blue for the eggs black, a dark brown, here's an orange, then I have white, and then I kind of have this violet purple. You use these different colors to just put in little accents and it makes it really stand out. Then I have a dark green, and this is a, a darker blue, like a cobalt blue, I think. Ooh, yellow green, spring green, a light yellow, and a deeper yellow, or a gold, and a pink. The pink I'm going to use for the flowers at the very last thing. So if you can keep them lined up like that, that will make it a lot easier for you when you start your project. So I'm going to tape it because when we're blending and rubbing, this is just regular uh, printer paper and it's pretty thin and it would be easy for it to bend and make a wrinkle and we don't want that. So I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to get it taped down. This is in landscape position. Okay, rub this on my close I'm going to do the top and the bottom first I just think it works best if you do that this is kind of a messy project where you're really using your imagination and that's what makes it so fun I think it doesn't have to be perfect this one this edge will look nice though we probably won't even go all the way to the edge you can see I didn't on that one I did use tape on that oh I don't know maybe I didn't maybe I forgot okay we're gonna start out with our eggs and look at the shape of those eggs they are ovals I'm gonna put them right in the middle I'm just going to draw them with my dark blue. Like an egg. There. Put one here. Leave a little space in between them. That's a little close there. A little space is good. There. All right put that over there because I used it. Now I'm going to color it in with my light blue. Don't you think this is probably like a robin's nest? Okay. 
I don't want to leave too much white showing, but if I leave some, it's okay. We'll be using a lot of layers of colors, you know, where you put one color on top of another, and that just adds more depth because, like we said before, we're tricking the eye to make it think it's three-dimensional. Okay. Pretty good. See how that's a little white, but that's all right, because we'll come back to it. We can put in as many layers as we want. All right, I'll put that over to that side. Now, my next thing is I'm going to take my black and go around the outside edges of the eggs like a shadow, kind of. So it looks kind of dark. Like if you were to look in this nest, it would be dark down there. Because nests are kind of like cups. I'm putting a little... See, I got these two kind of close, but I'm putting black in between it. It's going to be good. All right. I'm going to take this paper. I need to look at it. Now I'm going to go to my dark brown and I'm going to start with curved lines. Like these are like twigs or little. It's amazing to me when you can see birds nest. Sometimes they use twigs. Robins use twigs and uh, little sticks and grass and stuff, and then they they um, line the inside of it with wet mud. So it's really hard, kind of. Then they put really soft things in there for the babies. It's a lot of work, I think. And my watch, making all that noise. So we're just going to build up the outside of our nest. Lightly. going to take some orange and I'm going to put in some orange highlights kind of around the edges because this as I'm looking down into my nest it's going to be darker in the center and lighter on the edges on the top because of the light okay Alrighty. I might put in some more brown, dark brown, and maybe I'll put in a little more black. I'll keep these here. You see, look right here. It's pretty dark around here. When you put that black on top of the orange, it makes it darker. So this, this little center right here, this oval, is fairly dark. See, it's really just kind of scribbling curved lines. All right, this goes there. Now I'm going to take this white. I think I'm going to wipe off my hand a tiny bit. Now... I probably forgot to tell you this. I think we posted it. If your pastels are looking kind of dirty and you're, you want them to clean them up, you can always 
rub them like that and that'll help clean them up but we're using so many of these colors it doesn't really matter the only one I was thinking of that should be clean is the white so let's go back and let's put some white on our eggs and we're burnishing you know you know how you do with um, crayons if you're gonna press really hard This makes them stand out a little more. All right, my white is there. I'm going to take this blue too, and I'm going to just go around the edges a little, little more. Because I don't want you to see a whole bunch of white around the edges. I want it to be dark. I am going to take, let's put my finger in here like that and just press it a tiny bit just to smudge it. This is just blending, softening, If I get a little bit of a different color on, it's okay. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take my purple. What does purple have to do with the bird's nest? We're just going to give it a little light, a little highlight down here. It just makes another kind of brownish um, hue. We're probably not going to see very much purple when we're done. Just highlights. All right. Okay, and I'm going to take my brown again. I'm going to make it a little, another layer out here, just to make it a little bigger. I'm doing this softly. I'm going to come back and fix this up. We'll give it a lot more layers. But this, this part of it we're going to make uh, a little more yellower. All right, now I'm going to take my black and I'm going to do these branches. Now we're going to, to do this technique called scumbling. It sounds like a really big word, but all it means is you're going to lay the chalk on the side and you're going to lightly press on it and it's going to make texture like that. I'm going to make it come over here to this part too. This one. And then over here on the other side, I'm going to let it come up and out forked needs to be supported but something okay there so he's laying on that branch this is a little fatter here at the end black. Did my black go here? Yes. Brown. Okay, now this is the fun part, I think. We're going to take our dark green and we are going to be scumbling and just making in the background. You know how you take a picture with your camera and the, the, um, your focal point is really clear but then your background is real smudgy? That's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to start doing this however I want to just put that in. I want to put some in here. Don't worry, 
if it looks kind of brightish, we're going to fix this. So you could imagine these were leaves, can't you? You know, or um, if you were out by a bush. I can. All right. Love that. Looks good. It's looking pretty pale, but we're going to fix that. Okay, that was my dark green. Now I'm going to take some dark blue. Now this is going to create shadows because it's darker here. See that? And maybe some right in here closer to the nest. And some up here. I'm going to put a little blue on top of my black leaves. I mean on top of my black stems. That makes kind of a blue black color. And put some down here, kind of around the edges. I love scumbling. I think it's so fun. Put some over here. Just this is making like shadows. Do you like that? Okay, now this will this will really help make it look more alive. Now I'm going to take this dark, this light green, and I'm going to put it on top, just all over. Does it seem like it's making it look more like leaves, doesn't it? Looks really good. Now notice I'm kind of using strokes about that long. I'm not going from here to all the way over across my page. It just lots of layers. It looks so good. And you do use your imagination. I think this is fun. I like I like using pastels. Some of mine are really tiny, but I'm still using them. Okay. I like that. I think it looks good. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blend. So I'm going to start taking... I might need some more black on there. If it all erases, like that will do. So if you need to put a little more on there, go ahead. Oh yeah, that looks better. Ooh, that makes it really textury, doesn't it? So I'm doing my black parts first. Black and green. And there's some blue in there. I like the blue. I thought that blue, maybe I'll put a little more on there. I thought that blue added some nice highlights. I'm going to put some blue here because that blue it makes it kind of darker right around the edges. And down here too. See how the lightness and the darkness of the different colors create that sense of depth? Like maybe this could really be real out there. I'm just going to blend this. This I want this smushy. Short strokes. No hurry. You can hear it squeaking. It does make it softer when you blend, doesn't it? 
that's really a nice look. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is let's start adding some highlights to the outer section of the nest. So I'm going to start use putting yellow on here. So say maybe the sun is shining on this part of the nest, on this nest. And this is the edge and it looks a little brighter. That center part is darker. Just keep going around. What's so fun about this is you can't really make any mistakes. It's going to turn out good. All right, now I'm going to take my darker yellow and even put that on there. Look what that does. Well, that's really nice. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Okay, we're gonna touch it up a little here and there. See that purple starting to look kind of brownish. We're almost finished. What color went there? Maybe green, maybe yellow. I don't know. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm going to take, first I think I'm going to take my dark brown and I'm just going to put some more brown. I want it so that it um, blends from dark to light. It does, it's not just dark and then there's a ring of light. I want it to be a look a little more natural. Go brown in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take my black and I'm going to put some little highlights See how it stands out pretty nice? Not too much and kind of thin. See what that's doing? Isn't it amazing? I'm using kind of the corner edge of it. And it's like little skinny ones. And I think I'm going to just put a little more in here too. Let's see, maybe a little more brown in here to cover up some of these lightish spots, though I don't want it a solid color. Well, I'm liking that. Almost done. This is looking good. Okay. My brown goes up here. No problem, I gotta put everything where it goes. Now I'm gonna take my pink and I'm just going to move it around up here and just give the, use your imagination that there are pink flowers. Oh, I know, first I gotta do some yellow. That's what we need, I forgot this part. So I'm gonna put some yellow up here, just some lines and streaks maybe just to get another color in there see what that's doing it's not like good okay I'm kind of just scribbling all right now I'm going to take my pink and I'm going to come over here kind of on the edge and just make these little shapes maybe that would look kind of like flowers. 
you put them on top, it kind of changes the color. I don't want to do that too much, but I'm just using my imagination. They're not really even any particular shapes. Kind of shaping there. My pink is down here. See how easy that was with the colors in a line like that? It's always good when you're using pastels for a project to pick out your colors and have them in an order. Okay, so I forgot, I didn't need to, but I forgot to show you this. Maybe I'll just put it right here because I want to show you. I'm going to come over here now and I'm going to smooth out the edges on these eggs just a little bit. I'm going to lay my hand on this paper That way I'm not going to smear my paint. I'm just going to darken these up a little bit. On my paper. Because I don't want to smudge it. It is kind of smudgy anyways, but I don't want to smudge it anymore. Put that up there. I'm just going to tiny, tiny really tiny kind of cover up those white white spots yeah, it's a little white spot right there so see how you having that piece of paper helps okay and I think I'm going to just use a little white on here I'll keep my paper this is just going to give it a little highlight. Now before I take the tape off, I'm going to wash my hands with the baby wipes. I say we're done. So let's get our baby wipe. Get our hands washed up. Because when we take the tape off, we don't want to smear it up. Ooh. These are hard to get out when you're at the end. There's a little nest. Don't you think it's probably a robin's nest? Okay, so let's take the paper off. And then we'll be ready. Carefully take your paper off. Hold it up, you can look at it, then it will fly away. That border does look nice. Oop, now see I was in a hurry and I tore it, see that? It's okay. I'll start at the other end and I'll go slower this time. That's what happens when you hurry sometimes. All right. Ooh. What do you think? Has a lot of nice texture, doesn't it? Lots of shadows. I think that was really fun. Now, it's time. Okay, let's talk about chickadees. When I was outside working in my garden, I heard these chickadees. They are so cute. They're like little acrobats. They can hang upside down and eat. And they fly around kind of in flocks. And they... Um, make noises like squeaky toys. These are really good birds to have around because they love to eat insects and larvae and they don't pull worms out of the ground like robins do, but mostly they eat insects. They eat seeds, they'll come to your bird feeder. And here's their nest. 
Sometimes they lay as many as five or six little eggs. And if it's a really, if, if it's a really um, bountiful year, sometimes they'll even have two broods in one year, a brood being a little group of babies. So look at their nest there. It's different than the one we made, isn't it? All right, and here's one more. There he is flying around. They look so cute because they have that little black cap. That's why they're called black capped chickadees. And then it's almost like they have a little black scarf around their neck. They can live as, um, usually they live about two years. But I listened to this lady and she was talking about the reason they wouldn't um, maybe live that long would be something would happen to them when they're babies. But they had ba they had banded this one bird. You know how they put a band around the bird? And it's got information on it and a date. And it was in, I think it was in Minnesota or Wisconsin. It lived 11 years, which is really a long time for a little bird to live. Thing is, they're God's little birds, and every time even one of them falls to the ground and dies, he is such a loving father that he knows all about that. So let's go to, you can hear what they sound like. They are loud. Sometimes I hear this one call, the Phoebe call, and you it goes on and on and on and on. Okay, listen to this. I think I need technical assistance. I did calls. It's okay. I have to have a lot of help. They sound like squeaky toys. Now, did you hear that little um, Dee Dee at the end? I'll tell you about that in a minute. Now, let's listen to one more. It's this one, right? Oh, that was song, and this one's calls? I think it just did calls. Okay, let's try this one. Oh. We'll get it. This one is kind of saying, Phoebe, that's my dog's name. This is the one. They will do it for hours. Phoebe. <laughs> really cute. They make a lot of noise. They move around a lot. I think everybody, everybody really enjoys chickadees. When they say the other part of chickadee dee dee dee, maybe I'll stop them. The little D's, if they put on a lot of D's at the end, like chickadee dee 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 dee, that means something is upsetting them because they are really communicators. All their little D's, they, they make noises if they think there's a predator around because sometimes you'll walk near their nest and they'll be going or if a cat walks by, they make that noise. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that project. I thought it was really fun. We'll do more with our pastels and I will see you our next class. Love you.